Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about Quant Network, aka Q&T, so let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So, I know recently with the uh, market having a nice little pullback, we came back down to test that $94 range. It almost looks like that is becoming our uh, bottoming you know, support range, as you guys do see, like we continue to test that. Now, I will say this. We continue to make lower highs and we continue to test support. And uh, I'm not trying to like scare you guys or anything like that, but the more times that we do test the support range, the more chances of it actually breaking. Now, once that does break, the next major support zone isn't anything up here. It would actually be down here in like the $75 level range. So that's what we're basically watching for. And it, it technically you could say like $80 to $75 range. Um, but if that does not hold, then yes, we will retest like that $50 level, which is also why I've said, you know, I'm paying attention to that $50 level. A lot of people said like, oh, tell me that you have a short, tell me that you sold, you know, Q&T. It's just like idiotic statements. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm watching for right now. Um, I have been paying attention to it a little bit. Also, let me open up the Ethereum contract real quick just so that we could... Uh, you know, see where we actually are with this. I know that just recently we hit about 60,000 holders. You know, we're slightly up on that. Um, still pretty much sitting around like, you know, the same level. Um, but uh, yeah, not much has changed there. Trading volume is down a little bit, you know, with the market pulling back, obviously it's going to be down a little bit as well in price. Uh, so not much else to, you know, really kind of talk about with that. But I will say this today, we have something pretty crazy to talk about and it's um, a major connection and it's also talking more so about TC307. Uh, but first, let's go over here to this tweet from Dread Bongo. A true open metaverse cannot function without interoperability, which means the metaverse will need an any slash any interoperability you know, solution. Uh, the metaverse needs Overledger to succeed and flourish. Q&T will connect our digital worlds and experiences. And the funny thing about this is... Uh, you know, a lot of people have been saying like, you know, Q&T is not going to be that large of a use case. It's not going to be, you know, really anything. There's such better, you know, assets out there to really kind of invest money into. Q&T is an ERC-20 token, blah, blah, blah. We've been hearing about the, you know, the, the discussions around like why Q&T won't be anything. More so, it's like a lot of stuff to just kind of generate clicks and views. Um, I will say this right now. You know, when we really kind of look at crypto and we look at like some of the, uh, you know, categories within crypto, uh, more so like we kind of look at like even DeFi, right? Like you don't have true decentralized finance without like an interoperability between like the legacy platform. You still need a connection there. Um, but there's so much more here as well. Like the Internet of Things, that needs interoperability. Um, you know, uh, other ones here as well, like even the energy sector, you still need, you know, a connection bridge between like, the uh, you know current you know electrical grid to like blockchain technology, um, so much of this still needs like interoperability to be fully realized. Tokenization, uh, real estate, you know all of this stuff you know at the end of the day is nothing without true interoperability. And I've always said it time and time again like this market will you know be determined through like interconnectivity between the legacy platform and of course like the future you know digitization platforms, um, but. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have their own viewpoint on this, but I do think that like the metaverse, definitely the metaverse and even like the Internet of Things um, will truly, you know, need and it's going to be a necessity to be like interoperable with like, you know, our current systems, uh, especially for them to like truly be adopted in and, you know, continue to grow. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Joy Bongo for that. Also. I do want to go back in time a little bit to February 1st, 2021. We do see here from Anders. Imagine you're a big bank. You want to implement some blockchain within your system. Uh, you could spend a few months to implement it by hiring a team, make sure it adheres to regulations, etc. Or you could use Overledger operating system for any blockchain and start in eight minutes. Now, the funny thing about this, right, is uh, I've actually been, dis been discussing this for a while on this channel. And it's, uh, it's more so kind of centered around the idea of like, all right, how could we, you know, inter in, interoperate, uh, for example, like the legacy platforms. And we're talking about like, you know, hundreds to thousands of banks all at once uh, to, you know, blockchain technology or just crypto technology. All right. Because like these banks are not going to, you know, like he says here, hire a team, make sure it adheres to regulations. Like this takes forever to do so. 
we need streamlined adoption of crypto technology. It's not going to you know, take days, months, years to implement. No, they're going to utilize something like Overledger where you could have this fully up, uh, up and running in like you know, eight minutes or less. Um, I've always said like plug and play technology is the, the future of not only crypto adoption, but also like disruption within the legacy systems because they're not going to you know, wait days, years, months, whatever uh, to actually fully adopt this technology. So it's all going like a lot of these major banks are going to all happen at once in terms of like, you know, true full on like connections uh, to like crypto. And uh, we actually see this with like a few of the, you know, major partnerships that some of these, you know, companies have. Like, for example, Ripple with, uh, you know, Tranglo or uh, Finostra. Uh, you also see like Accenture, right? Like these are companies that have direct connections and direct, you know, exposure to th hundreds to thousands of banks and financial institutions. Like even Finostra is like, 8,000 plus banks. It's insane. Um, and of course, over here from Quant themselves, the opportunities that tokenization presents are uh, undoubtedly, you know, exciting, but there is one major barrier standing in the way in dropability. When digital assets are created, they, you know, can typically only be used on a single uh, system or network. And of course, the solution is, you know, overledger. Like Quant is truly, you know, the key to unlocking mass adoption of crypto technology and digital assets in general. And I do believe here, like tokenization, like the opportunity that tokenization does offer to like real estate, uh, to like, you know, commodities, you know, typical equity stocks, right? Um, it's truly remarkable. Like tokenization is taking, you know, trillions and we're talking like hundreds of trillions of dollars. Um, you could even tokenize derivatives if you want. Like we, all of the money could be tokenized, which is like over 2.7 quadrillion dollars if we're talking like full on statistics. Um, but yeah, like the scope of tokenization is such a massive opportunity that it, it would leave like any, you know, typical individual speechless. I mean, like even bringing up like a quadrillion dollars, right? In, in conversation, like somebody will be like, what are you even talking about, right? Cause it's truly eye opening, like the value behind like debt markets, uh, behind like derivatives, like it is, you know, a very large amount of, you know, money. But yeah, I think that tokenization plays a pivotal role in not only like major adoption, but also like massive volume and value. Um, but also over here from uh, Big Bags 30 k follow the agendas. ISO standards will drive the future of digitization. ISO TC307 blockchain standards are one of those. QNT is going to be a critical piece of utility within, you know, overledger to solve global interoperability requirements. Zoom out, let's, you know, let the market decide. I actually seen a, a, a comment on uh, one of my videos just recently and, you know, no ego attached at all, but like I basically scold the individual because like, you know, they were saying, you know, ISO 222 has nothing to do with Q&T. You know, it's laughable because you go back to 2013 where, you know, Gilbert Verdian was literally talking about ISO 222 before any of these companies were actually fully compliant with it. That's That's how funny it is. Also, remember... ISO TC307 is created by Gilbert Verdian, which is already interconnected with like over 50 plus countries worldwide. And uh, it's the standard for blockchain adoption. Like it, it, it's literally the standard that is going to be put in place around like the world within countries to not only allow for adoption of crypto technology, but also like fully utilize crypto technology. And we do see up here like interoperability standardization collaboration, possible framework for collaboration interoperability stack. You, you do see like the standard bodies here, ISO all the way to ITUT, um, IEEE, IETF, IEC, you know, industry standards, technical standards, open source slash community, interoperability type governance, business and technical. Now, with all of this in mind, here's where things get very interesting. So the UNE, uh, the UNECE, sorry. You guys probably never heard about this, but uh, this is actually a big connection to what Quant is actually trying to do. First off, we do see down here how we impact your daily life. Grow old, live near a dam, data can save lives, use chemicals, throw out garbage, teach a man to fish sustainably, you know, protect your environment. Like this is all around like sustainability um, and environmentation and, and things like that. Um, but we do see over here their mission. So here is the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. Uh, was set up in 1947 by ECO SOC. It is one of the five regional commissions of the United Nations. The others are, and of course, you guys do see all of them here. Uh, their major aim is to promote pan-European, you know, economic integration. UNECE includes 56 members 
uh, states in Europe, North, uh, North America, and Asia. However, all interstate United Nations member states may participate in the work of the UNECE. Over 70 international professional organizations and other non-governmental uh, organizations take part in UNECE activities. Now, you guys might be wondering, like, you know, what am, what am I even, you know, doing bringing up this, you know, major, you know, connection here to this, like, huge, you know, commission, if you will. Well, if we actually go over to their uh, PDF files, we actually do see this one. Now, this one, you know, came up um, and I was like, this is actually interesting because this is blockchain interoperability, the main issues and how ISO TC307 is considering addressing them all. Um, and of course, this was back in April of 2018. You know, we do see like, you know, ISO TC307 SG7 interoperability of blockchain and distributed ledger technologies. Now, at first, like this doesn't really have too much to do with like, you know, where we are at currently. But we do see as the documents, you know, representing the work of ISO TC307 are not publicly available. This presentation is only based on public information and broad approaches as a class A uh, Lason to ISO TC 307, UNECE has access to the underlying draft materials and they can be shared with those who have agreed to IP protection policies. I could provide additional detail as helpful. The following presentation does not represent the official point of view of ISO TC 307 or UNECC. In fact, uh, the opinions uh, expressed are my own. Now, uh, we do see down here, you know, a few things. You know, here's uh, ISO TC 307 blockchain and distributed ledger technologies. We do see the scope standardization of blockchain technologies and distributed ledger technologies. Like this is actually how big TC307 actually is, by the way. Um, we do see like the study group. Uh, we also do see like the related working group over here as well. You guys could, you know, look at that real quick. Um, then we do see like the timeline to date. Here is uh, the timeline, you know, within like a lot of like the establishments and, you know, discussions and stuff. Then down here, we do see like the standard slash projects under development, uh, reference architecture, taxonomy and ontology, terminology um, and uh, concept, sorry. And of course, you do see like the rest here, uh, more so like overview of and interactions between smart contracts and blockchain and distributed ledger technology systems. Then down here, how different from cloud com uh, computing, Internet of Things, you know, crypto assets slash stores of value, decentralization and consensus mechanisms, immutability of design, smart contracts, unique fingerprint of layers of the reference architecture. And down here, we have interoperability. So look into prior work and finding what is unique for B slash DLT, Corba 1995, EDI 1960s and XML 1990s, uh, you know, web services 2004. ISO recent effort, cloud services, you know, interoperability, ISO IEC 9, uh, 9, 19,941, 2017. Obviously, like, yes, I'm probably pronouncing this, you know, these n numbers wrong. Um, but then we do see, like, Internet of Things interoperability, which, by the way, like, these are completely different in terms of, like, the interoperability scope. Um, and then down here, we do see, you know, prior ISO, you know, work five uh, fa faucet, sorry, model from ISO slash IEC. And, of course, you guys have, like, you know, kind of see this. This is basically their, you know, uh, faucets of cloud interoperability. And uh, down here we do see, you know, SG7 process since November. Application of five, you know, faucets to from between layers of B slash DLT. As you see, like the entire breakdown here. And then down here we do see um, this sort of interconnection between not only blockchain technology, but basically, you know, everyday life, if you will. Um, and they're just kind of showing you guys this quick little viewpoint, which by the way, I know like, you know, visually, this is not like the best sort of diagram to follow. Um, but we do see down here, like their, you know, process, you know, since November, really kind of just looking at, you know, considerations around like crypto assets and, you know, tokens in general and how to adopt this technology. And of course we do see like down here, leveraging, you know, UN slash CE fact, you know, standards. Um, basically preparing for the future around like ISO TC 307 itself and where we could basically head to. The funny thing is that like they're literally talking about interoperability here and DLT technology and adopting it. And this is like coming from the UNECE. This is like from their own website and you guys can see like all their publications and stuff up here. But this is like one of the largest, by the way, um, if you look at like their region, like let's go over to like their region by the map. Like, look at all the major, you know, connections that they actually have here. So, obviously, like, they would be looking at um, interoperability uh, between their systems because of not only the, the scope of their partnerships. Like, you guys can see, like, their partnerships if you come over here. 
Uh, like for an example, you guys can see like, you know, a lot of them are major connections to like commissions around the world. Like you do see here, like this is all through like communications technologies. Like they would need interoperability at the forefront, especially like with what they are focused on. Uh, because it's all like interconnectivity between like full on nations and countries in general. Um, and like this goes all the way back to like 1999, for an example, uh, where like we're seeing like, you know, SECI on the facilitation of international road transport and goods. Uh, 2000 as well. Like this is like, you know, international telecommunication. Like this is what like this is like the nation uh, commission that would, you know, really kind of thrive on interoperability, especially if you look at like some of their work. Like if you look at, you know, their work, they're basically in a few areas around the world, like transport, trade, statistics, sustainable energy, population, housing and land, forest, environmental policy, economic cooperation and, you know, integration as well. Like I said, a lot of this, a lot of these, you know, major, um, you know, commissions and agency officials, more so like, you know, actual governing bodies. These are the ones that have been really kind of putting a focus point on, you know, crypto technology and how to fully adopt it. And like ISO TC 307 is addressing all of the issues around, you know, crypto interoperability at the forefront and how we could really kind of leverage this technology to not only see the efficiencies around it, but also to disrupt many of the areas that, you know, some of these uh, major companies and organizations actually, you know, focus on. Like for an example, if we just click trade here um, on their website, we do see here like the trade program works to develop closer economic relations between member states. Like this is a global, like when they say states, they're not talking about like, you know, states within like the United States, but like states is a, like, you know, major bodies around the world in terms of like actual whole on countries and nations. And uh, you do see like their key areas of work. Um, again, like there's major barriers to trade that they have to, you know, really kind of, you know, fix, which is all sort of around like interoperability and interconnectivity, which is also why I say like they have been putting a focus point on interoperability. And we actually do see down here, like some of their publications are actually focused on like digital, uh, like digital trade, like digital and sustainable trade facilitation implementation in the, you know, works. Uh, so do you see over here, like another document similar to that. Um, and of course, like you guys are more than welcome to go check out this uh, major, you know, organization on uh, unece.org. But like I said, I, I, I found this PDF and I was like, this is very interesting because they are mentioning how to not only implement DLT systems around like, you know, full on government agencies and bodies, but also how to like solve interoperability between smart contracts, crypto technology, how we could fully adopt the use cases as well. Like if you look at like some of the use cases that they are really kind of focusing on, um, it is pretty interesting. So I think that we should definitely focus on some of these old publications. Like this one from 2018 really kind of opened my eyes because like this is actually a very large um, organization that has direct connections to major areas around the world. And uh, yeah, I think that their partnership scope is more so like kind of partnered with whole on like nations and countries, which plays right into ISO TC 307 w with like connections to 50 plus countries around the world. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As well as up to you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.